I got a request a few days ago uh, about how to make an audio amplifier, simple audio amplifier, on 5 volts. And uh, recently, say yesterday or uh, somewhat earlier, I published a completely, say, classical uh, class B amplifier adapted for 5 volts. Uh, but of course um, it's always interesting to do experiments. And in the past I did a lot of experiments with these kinds of circuits. Especially on low voltages. And I found that for instance with one transistor or one Darlington you can get a quite good results in audio amplification. Say that can also happen uh, when you do experiments with class B uh, audio amplifiers with a complementary end stage, one NPN transistor and one PMP transistor. And then uh, when you uh, say study that circuit, could be that when you leave out one of the end transistors, the circuit also works properly. So this kind, in a kind of way, the end result um, of all these experiments. But anyway, I could make a quite good working 5 volt audio amplifier, and the schematic is here. In fact, it's very simple. It's a Darlington with one with two NPN transistors, one medium power NPN transistor, the BD139, and one, of course, more or less the classical universal NPN transistor that always works, that is the BC547. And we set the bias here of the whole Darlington with the help of that 470k potentiometer. Uh, this is a protective resistor so that the whole Darlington does not burn out when you turn that uh, pot potentiometer to the up position. And that is more or less all to tell. And I found that it even works worked better than the earlier circuit. With more transistors and now with less transistors we have the same uh, result and say good idea is that less is more and uh, that happens in this circuit. Here you see a, perhaps a quite strange line with a resistor of 220k uh, I say that it is optional. Uh, you can test this circuit and perhaps can get a better sound. Uh, less distortion. That's the Say when you uh, study the signals on the oscilloscope, you see better results. But when you uh, pure are listening to the uh, audio amplifier, you can't hear any difference anyway. That's more or less classical. There's everything to do with say all the properties of audio amplifiers. Most important thing is listen. Listen to uh, the sound that is generated for instance by this amplifier here. Simple audio amplifier of 5 volts. For instance this amplifier that is my signal tester, signal tracer, etc, etc. And also with high quality audio and amplifiers. I also made a drawing to show how it could be made in practice. Very simple. Pen over somewhat. 5 volts in is ok. Distortion level is set a little bit by this uh, uh, 
backup link resistor. The bias is extremely important. It sets the pureness of the sound. You can do that with a screwdriver. And the volume control is 50k, 50,000 ohms. Happy Easter, by the way. And uh, well, let's listen and look and see, etc. etc. Here is that circuit, and I've made a switch here uh, via which I can switch to, uh, say, music out of this digital MP3 music player. Very, very old school, anyway. And uh, we can look to the uh, signal generator that's here. Schematic is on my YouTube channel. And then we can say see the typical uh, effects of how such an amplifier on 5 volt works. By the way, it constantly takes uh, on 4.6 volts approximately 200 milliampere. So when you want to connect this to an Arduino or a computer, uh, be sure that the output on the plug uh, is able to uh, give out 200 milliampere. Otherwise it could be in a very peculiar situation that your the, your computer gets damaged. But on the other hand, uh, the USB output of many computers can handle surely 200 milliampere, and that's also the reason why I have limited this um, current to the schematic. Now you're here on the background. Uh, a sound when at least YouTube is able to reproduce that sound. It's a approximately uh, in the 50 Hertz range and here you see the distortion that is given out out of this uh, amplifier. Is that bad? No, not at all. Could also be that my sine wave generator gives a little bit of distortion, but anyway. Uh, let's go to a higher frequency. And I think this is not bad. This is not bad for such a simple amplifier. I adapt now the good signal and here of course clipping completely logical when an audio amplifier is overdriven on the input of its first stage be it a transistor or whatever you see this clipping so and that's what I did now here No clipping. Anyway. And here a higher frequency. You surely see distortion here. It has also to do with clipping, etc. etc. But of course, say this is the best signal on this frequency. And say in a certain way. When you make such a uh, simple audio amplifier with only a few components, we have to live with, say, some distortion. Now we're going to play a music, a piece of music. Always the same music. This is the maximum level.
the volume level now. And now it's maximum. Now medium. And it surely is a good quality simple amplifier working on 5 volts. Given the whole setup, uh, perhaps interesting to show how the bias works. The bias potentiometer is here in the circuit, or here in the circuit. Let's listen. The effects of the bias. Now I set that potentiometer to a proper value here. So there's a certain bandwidth in that 470k potentiometer where it all works fine. Thanks for watching. Um, not much more to tell. Pen over somewhat. Here is that end transistor, the BD139. Here is the BC547, the driver transistor. Uh, two 100 nanofarad capacitors, that is the same as 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Here, 50k input potentiometer. Um, volume control, here the bias potentiometer sets the bias of that whole. Um, uh, Darlington, two resistors of 15 ohm in parallel, so together they have approximately 7.5 ohms. And the reason is that why I've used that, uh, they get a little bit warm, so that's a reason why I switch them in parallel. Thanks for watching again. Finally the schematic, and I think this is a, say, um, an easier circuit compared to the earlier circuit that I published. I will give the link to that earlier circuit. And that was more or less all.